Welcome back to another detailed exercise. We're going to be creating a carabiner. This was requested by an avid supporter of the channel. Let's get started. Let's create a new component. Let's name it spine. For this project, all dimensions are going to be in millimeters. Select the top view. Let's create a sketch in a visible plane. Let's begin the profile for the carabiner spine. I'm going to select a two point rectangle and we're going to make it construction. I want to lock it into place in the center point. And add some dimensions. locked into place we're going to grab the center diameter circle I'm going to make it tangent to the right side of the rectangle I'm going to add some dimensions to lock it into place Continuing with the profile, let's turn off the construction geometry. Left click, drag and hold from the circle edge to make sure it's tangent. Left click and drag again, creating an arc. I'm going to start at this point, drag up to create a line. It'll terminate. Select this end point of that line until you see a square. Left click, drag. I'm going to intersect this top line here. We're going to make it tangent. We're going to add a nine millimeter dimension. I'm going to select the line command again. The end of the arc, left click, drag and hold until we create another arc until it intersects the circle. We want this arc to be tangent with the circle. We want this arc to be tangent with this bottom line. We want this arc also to be tangent with this line. Select the three point arc. Select the end point of this arc and the end point of this line. We'll make it concentric with this circle. And that's our profile. Rotate to the front view. Create a sketch on a visible plane. We'll select the center diameter circle, add dimensions. We're going to be using this to create the thickness. Select the outer edge of the circle first. Select this point here. Select the horizontal vertical constraint. Select the center point and we'll select this point here. Now it's exactly where you need it to be. Select the sweep command. Select the profile. The path is going to be this edge. And it gives us the profile we need. Select the top view once again. Create a sketch on the visible plane. Select the P key. Set the selection filter to bodies. Select the entire body. It gives us the profile we need. We can turn off the body and select three point rectangle. Make sure you intersect this side. It'll be perpendicular. You can just drag down. We'll make this 14.5. We'll dimension this bottom left corner from here to here to give us the point we need. Bring back the bodies. Select extrude command. Select the profile we just created. 
Direction is going to be symmetric. Distance will be set to all. And that gives us the profile we want. Let's select the thread command. Select this top edge here. Select model. Uncheck full length. Offset, we want to be 1.25. Thread size is going to be five millimeters. Designation, we want to select 0.5. I want to check my camera settings and make sure it's set to perspective with ortho faces because I want it to be flat. Once again, create a sketch on the top plane. If it's not already visible. Select the P key. Set the selection filter to specified entities. Grab this bottom edge here. I'm going to select three point rectangle once again. Select this point and this point here. I'm looking for the square. Bring it down and make this a length of 6.35. I'll turn off the body. I'll bring back the previous sketch. I'll select three point triangle again. I'll make a construction. I'll select these two endpoints here. drag it up till about right there. I'll set the collinear constraint for this edge to this edge. I'll turn off the previous sketch. I'll once again select three point rectangle, turn off construction. I want to select this endpoint. This endpoint here. this endpoint and I'll make it 6.35 as well I'll select E for extrude select this profile and this profile I'll bring back the body I'll start the profile with an offset of 0.65 Set the distance to all. It'll take a chunk out of it, the top and the bottom. I'll select the mirror command. Object type should be set to features. Select the extrusion we just created. The mirror plane, it's gonna be this plane right here. Compute type can be set to adjust. And that's the profile we're looking for. Primarily working in the top view for now. Create a sketch once again on the visible plane. Let's bring back one of the previous sketches. I want to select the line command, make it construction. I want to turn off the body. I'm going to select that part there. I want it to be perpendicular. Make sure you don't have the constraints locked in, but make sure it's perpendicular. I'm gonna measure the distance from this edge to this edge to be three millimeters. The distance from this edge to this edge to be 0.75. It's locked into place. Now we can start creating our triangles that we need. I can turn off the previous sketch for now. Select the line. Turn off construction. Select this point and this point. Drag this down to this edge. Make sure it's perpendicular. And set it. I want the angle of this line and this line to be 45 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Actually, I'm going to correct this because I want it to... I don't want it to 
be exact, I want it to overlap a little bit. So I'll select this line in here and I'll make it 3.5. And I'll drag this down, making sure it's perpendicular. I'll close it off. Make sure that this line, um, excuse me, this point and this point are coincident with each other. Now I'll measure it to be 45 degrees. And I'll do the same thing here, but make it slightly shorter. So I'll make this line one millimeter. Perpendicular, basically creating triangles. This line and this line, 45 degrees. I want to do the same thing for the top. Start this point here and there. Set it 3.5. Bring it inward, perpendicular, create a triangle. Set this line and this line to 45 degrees. Setting this line here to be one. Perpendicular, 45 degrees. I could have also done it a lot easier by simply selecting a line, construction, finding the center point of this line, and I could have mirrored it. Bring back the body. We want to create a circle. So now that I have that, I got to bring back this previous sketch and I can turn off the body because that's what I'm going to be using. Add dimensions to the circle. Select the construction line. Add some dimensions. I want to lock this circle into place by adding a coincident constraint from the center point to this line here. And now it's complete. Turn off that sketch. I'm going to drag the items here. Select extrude command. It's only going to select the close profiles. I'll bring back the body. Direction to symmetric. I'll set the distance to all. As a rule of thumb, if you ever run into an issue where you have little nicks and cuts here because it didn't set properly, you could simply select the faces and delete it to give you the flat shapes that you're looking for. Let's add some fillets. Select the fillet command, full round fillet. I wanna grab this section here. If you see the, the larger side selected, it's the wrong side. Drag it over slightly until you get the tops all selected. Left click and it'll create a full round fillet exactly the way we want it. Same thing for this side. Select the plus. We're looking for the top and it gives us the round fillet we're looking for. Continuing on with our fillets. We want to select a regular fillet. Select this edge and the other edge across from it. We're going to set this to 0.4. Select the plus symbol. I'm going to select this edge here and this edge here. I'm going to make that a one. Select the fillet command once again. To select the outer edges and the inside face and make this a point one. Create a sketch on the right plane. I'm going to rotate it till it's vertical. 
select the line command, construction line, create a line in the center, and drag it up to about 15 millimeters. I'm gonna create the grooves. So I'm gonna select an overall slot, turn off construction. I'm gonna create a slot. Select the horizontal vertical constraint tool. Select this point, the center point. Add dimensions to the slot. I want the radius to be three for the slot arc. Select the left edge and line it up with the center point. Distance to 1.5. Select the mirror command. Select the objects we want to mirror, which is gonna be the slot. Mirror line going to be the line we just created and it's set. Select the extrude command, select both profiles. To be on the safe side I'll select symmetric and I'll set the distance to all. I'll add one final fillet, select this edge and this edge, this edge and that edge and I'll also make it a point. And that completes the spot. Continuing on, let's create the second part. Create a new component. Label it gate. Let's hide the spine. Select the top view. Create a sketch on the visible plane. Add a center diameter circle in the center and make it 4.5 millimeters. Select the extrude command. Direction is going to be symmetric. Measurement is going to be whole length. Make sure it's 23.25. Select the front view, create a sketch on the visible plane, select the P key. Selection filter should be set to specified entities. We'll select the top edge and the bottom edge of the cylinder. And we can turn off the body. We can create two profiles simply from this line. Once we get the general shape, we'll add dimensions and constraints. Making sure this edge and this bottom edge is perpendicular to each other. Adding dimensions over to the left edge. The angle of this line and this line on the opposite side is going to be 45 degrees. The width of this line is going to be 0.543. Now that that's fully defined, we can go to the second profile. Make this line and this line perpendicular to each other. Add more dimensions. Make sure the angle of this line and this line is 45 degrees. The distance of the length of this line is going to be 0.543. That's also fully defined. Last but not least, let's add a center diameter circle. 
it's going to be the hole that we need as a cutout. I want the distance from the bottom edge to be 2.15. I want to constrain the center of the circle to the center point of the sketch. Now it's fully defined. Turn on the bodies. Select extrude command and select the profiles we just created. Select the entire profile. Direction is going to be symmetric. Measurement hole length. Set it to 1.65. Bring back the sketch. Select extrude command. Left click and hold because we want to select the inside profile. We want the direction to be symmetric. Distance is going to be set to all. And we can turn off the sketch. Finally, let's add some fillets. Let's add a fillet to this edge, this edge, and this internal edge here and make it 1.5. We can use the plus symbol to add some more corresponding fillets, selecting this face here and here, these edges. Rotate it around and do the same thing at the bottom or the top. Set it to 0.05. Let's also select the inside of the cylinders as well. If you've already typed in numbers, hold control and you can also select the insides. And that completes the second part. Let's continue with the third component. Create a new component. Let's label it lock screw. Select the top view. Let's turn off the visibility for the gate. Create a sketch on the visible plane. Let's start out by creating a center diameter circle. And give it a dimension of 7.9. Select extrude command. Direction is going to be two sides. First side is going to be 2.75. Tab key and 8.25. Select the coil command. Select this top plane. Select the center point. We'll set the dimension to 7.9 millimeters in diameter. want the type to be height and pitch. Diameter is obviously 7.9. We want the height to be 5.5. The pitch we want to be 60. Section is going to be triangular internal. Section position is going to be outside. Section size we're going to make 0.1. We're going to be using this as a guide to make our knurling. Create a sketch. Draw on the top plane, select the line command and make a construction. Start at the center point, drag it over to the edge of the circle. Turn off construction, let's create a triangle. Let's lock this triangle into place. Select the horizontal vertical constraint, select this point here. Select the perpendicular constraint. Select this line and this line here. Select the symmetry constraint. Select this point here, this point here, and select this line. Let's add some dimensions. Select this edge and this point. 
we're going to make it 0 0.01. I'm going to select this point here on the rect on the triangle and this point here and also make it point one. Let's use the sweep command. Select the profile triangle we just created. It's going to be single path. The path is going to be the inside edge of this rectangle of the court. I'm going to twist it because if not, I'll show you something in a sec. It's not perfect. I'm going to go ahead and hide the body. So you can see, it's kind of jagged. So to correct that, I'm going to get rid of a twist angle. Edit feature, twist angle. I'm going to make it 30 degrees. And now it's perfect. You can play around with the numbers to get the desired state you want. I'm going to select a circular pattern. I select a rectangular pattern here, but I can also switch the circular pattern. Object type is going to be features. I'm going to select the sweep I just created. The axis is just going to be the body of the cylinder. I want a quantity of 43. Compute type optimized. For this next section, it may take some time to compute, but I'll go ahead and fast forward. Select American command. Object type is going to be features. Select a sweep in a circular pattern. Mirror plane is going to be this plane here. Compute type is going to be optimized. Now it's set. We're going to add chamfers, fillets, and threads. Select the whole command. Select this top face. Let's drag this dot in the center to the center point of the circle. Distance. It's going to be all. Hold type is going to be simple. Hold tap type is going to be tap. Thread offset is going to be offset. And we're going to make the drill point flat. The thread offset is going to be 0.4. Thread depth, I want to make 6.5. As far as the thread profile type, it's going to be 5 millimeters. M5 by 0.5 and it's going to be modeled. I'm going to go back and make some corrections to the whole command in a second and I'll show you why. So let's add chamfers. Select this edge and this edge. Set it as a 0.7. Add some fillets to the outer edges. This edge and this edge. Make it 0.5. Now for the threads, I needed to add the chamfer first for the bottom. I needed to make the offset slightly lower. I just put a random number in there. So I'm going to go back, select the whole command, edit feature. I want the thread offset to not be offset, but to be full. And now it won't interfere with the chamfer. If I had created a chamfer after I made it full, it would not have worked properly. And that completes component three of this exercise. And now for the final component, create a new component. And let's call this pin. Let's hide the lock screw. Create a sketch on the front plane. And let's create the profile as follows. Mm -hmm. 
Let's add some dimensions. Select the equal constraint. Let's make this inside equal. Make this point equal here with this line here. Add a dimension to the inside. And now it's locked into place, fully defined. Let you see profile once again by turning off constraints and dimensions. And that's what the profile should look like. Here are the dimensions. I'm going to select the revolve command. Select this edge for the axis because the profile is already selected. And that's the profile we're going for. Let's create a mid plane. Select this top face, this bottom face here because we're going to be using it. For the mirror command. For now, let's turn off that mid plane. Create a sketch on the front plane. Select the P key for project, and I want to select the top here. I need to use the line for what I'm about to do. I can currently turn off the bodies and just use this line. So I'm going to select a two point rectangle, make it a construction rectangle, start at the center point, drag it out. I want this point here to be coincident with this point there, add a dimension to this side here. The rectangle is fully defined, however, we got some more work to do. Select the line command, make sure construction is turned off. Make this a solid line. Select the three point arc. Select this point here, this point here. Add the tangent constraint. I want the arc to be tangent with this line. Now it's fully defined. Bring the bodies back. Select the revolve command. Profile is already selected. The axis is going to be this edge here. And it gives us what we want. We're going to bring back the mid plane. Select the mirror command. The object type is going to be features. Select the revolve we just created. The mirror plane is going to be this plane here. And compute type is going to be set to adjust. We can turn off construction. And last but not least, we're going to add some fillets. Select the fillet command, select this face here, and this face here, and we'll set a dimension of 0.1. And that completes the pen. Now that all of the parts have been created, let's get started with the assembly. Let's make all components visible. Select the home key, zoom in, spread them out so we can work with them one by one. I'm going to hide the lock screw in the pin, and for now I'm going to work with the spine and the gate. I want to lock down the spine. I could simply right click spine and ground it, but I'm not going to do that. For this exercise, I'm going to select move copy. Move type is going to be point to point. Origin point is going to be here. I'm going to turn on all the origins. And the target point is going to be this point here. Capture position. Next, I'm going to select as built joint. Motion type is going to be rigid. I'm going to select the spine and select this point here. 
and it's going to be locked into place and I can't move it. Turn off the origin. And next I want to work with the gate. I'm going to select joint. Make sure between two faces is selected for both. For the first component, I'm going to zoom in and select this face here, that face there. And once again, I'm going to select the inside. I'm going to make sure that type is going to be set to revolute for motion. Select this face, select this face, and once again, select that part and it's set. I'm going to rotate it to about right there so it'll zero it out. I'm going to go back to the revolute joint, edit motion limits. I want the rest to be at zero and the maximum I want to be here, slightly touching, but not completely touching. And now it's set. I'm going to bring back the pin, select joint. I'm just going to select the center point of the joint. I want to turn off the gate. I want to lock it in between this point here. Well, I could simply just go inside the cylinder here. Hold control and slide in the center. And the motion should be set to revolute and it's good to go. Turn back on the gate. It's coming together nicely. Last but not least, I'll bring back the lock screw. I'll select joint between two faces. I'll select this top face here. This, this face here. Once again, select that face there. It's going to lock in the center of the cylinder here, and I'll just select this point. Motion, I want to be cylindrical. I'm going to select the limit, select the limits. I'm just going to give it some random numbers to spread them out. I'm going to go to inspect analysis, section analysis. I'm going to select this plane here because this is what I want to see. I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is turn it on. And as you can see, it overlaps, but you can go back later on and fix it if you see fit. Okay. Now for the joint, the cylindrical joint, I'm going to edit motion limits. I want to bring it up as far as I can until it makes sense. Then we'll do the same thing for this section here. And again, this is just for a physical depiction. I'm going to preview the limits. And it's set. Last but not least, I'm going to turn off section analysis, assemble, motion link. I'm going to select cylindrical, link with the same joint. I'm going to set the distance to 0.5, and the angle is going to be 360 degrees, and this is the speed by which it rotates when it moves up and down. And as you can see, it remains attached. The gate.
gate pivots on the spine and you have a lock screw rotating on the gate. And that completes this project. Well, I hope you enjoyed this extended project. Stick around and I shall see you in the upcoming videos.